Hello and welcome to the Precise Cricket Podcast. I'm delighted today to be joined by Bryce Housen, who is a up-and-coming S&C coach based in Sussex, who has already got great experience both in professional cricket, um, professional tennis and a multitude of different things. So Bryce, hello. Hello, thanks for having me on, mate. My pleasure, my pleasure. Thank you for coming on. And I'm really excited today to ask you a few questions on the podcast um, about sort of uh, S&C, how you got into it, what you kind of want to look for, uh, what you want to kind of do, because it's kind of come at a, a really good time that we're having this chat because on social media, since the season's finished in the UK, I'm getting a, an enormous amount of requests or people asking me what to do fitness-wise. Oh. And I'm not the qualified expert, you are. So it is um, a brilliant time to ask you these sorts of questions and see what you think about them. Sure. Um, well, way I to go back to your first point, the way I got into S&C was through... Uh, when I was coming up as a, as a cricketer myself um, and working with some real, like, real inspiring and good S&C coaches as I went through college and played in the county academy and stuff like that. Um, and so we'll go away. Really good internship and a placement with Hampshire and the Southern Vipers over there. So I, I managed to learn a lot and work for, work with the, the kind of a pro the, the strength and conditioning coaches there. And from there, so I graduated from uni and I've gone into working with uh, county tennis um, and also now working at Windersham House School and leading their kind of youth development pathway, which is, is, pretty, is pretty cool. So you say, you just touched on one thing there, obviously that's great background sort of from where you started to where you are now you say you sort of had some inspiring coaches when you were younger that kind of got you interested in the subject of strength and conditioning fitness nutrition how how are those coaches and how do they inspire you to get to where you are now because in any sport at any age you always get inspirations and you want to look up to people so what did those guys or girls do to sort of rub off their experiences on you yeah, um, I think being a good coach, first and foremost, is, is like fundamental. Uh, whatever sort of aspect you're coaching, whatever, it, whatever if you're coaching a specific sport, if you're coaching strength and conditioning, being able to have that actual personal, like interpersonal and people skills and communication skills is going to be so important, mm -hmm. whether you're coaching cricket, whether you're coaching strength and conditioning. And... So it meant I had a really good personal relationship with the strength and conditioning coaches. Like we would go into a session and we would talk about things completely unrelated to to cool. like cricket, S and C, the session we were doing, and we would we would just talk about like how the day was at college or whatever. Yeah, sure. And I think straight away you get kind of that coach athlete kind of relationship, I guess. Um, and so you kind of. It, it goes a long way. So you've got to trust kind of both both ways. Like you've got to have trust in the coach and the coach has to have trust in the player. And I think once you've kind of established that trust, that's when you start to trust what they're saying and you listen a little bit more and you respect their opinion. And obviously, like, these coaches come with an unbelievable amount of knowledge. Um and things which I know we've spoken about it recently. Things which they know they they've done themselves, and things which kind of rub off on you. And it's and that's the kind of path which I wanted to go down as well. And making sure I'm first and foremost, I'm going to be a good coach, and then I'm going to get kind of the knowledge which you have to have to go with it. But to work on yourself as a as a, a kind of a people's person and be and develop a good coach athlete relationship through people going all kinds of different stages of their life, I think is going to be really important. And it's, it's something which I definitely looked up to in the coaches I was working with. Yeah, and that's such a good point you touched on about having that coach-player relationship and almost getting to know the player before you can properly coach them. Um, and yeah. I think it doesn't really matter, well, I can only speak from a cricket coaching perspective, but it doesn't really matter what 
level that player is, I've always found personally, you can get more of that player once you understand their personality. And I presume that's the yeah. same in your field because you can deliver sessions, but until you understand how a player works or how they receive information, it can be quite hard to implement that information. Yeah, absolutely. Especially if we look at like uh, coaching cues we use and things like that. And uh, there's some athletes who respond perfectly to just um, like using their body parts to like, so you're, for example, I might cue like slightly more knee bend or something like that. And straight away, they're able to do that um, or slightly less knee bend and straight away, they're able to do that. But there's other athletes who can't quite figure out how to control that kind of their body yeah, just by cool. using that cue. We might have to look at other ways of like constraining a movement, I guess, and or maybe just putting something in front of their knees on their legs so they can't bend their knees as mm -hmm. much. That. So all athletes are going to, or all players and all children, whatever age, they're going to learn and pick up information in different ways. And, and I think having a wide range of skills to be able to get your point across as a coach is, is for different people, is, is fundamental. No, absolutely. And, and just on the S&C thing, obviously you've got your cues and things like that. I mean, me personally, I got in, interested in sort of, uh, strength and conditioning and fitness because I was a well, I was a chubby kid when I was younger and when I got on the academy at Sussex it was a massive thing cricket was having that shift from sort of the old fashioned cricketers where you used to drink five pints before a game and during lunch to that yeah. new modern day cricketer and that's how I got an interest in it but for people that don't have an interest in sort of fitness and nutrition but know it can benefit their cricket the S and C world can be so mind boggling because there's so much information out there. So just on that, how do you then condense all this sort of scientific evidence in the most simplest form? And how do you kind of explain the basics to people about how it will help their well, cricket in this case, but just sport and well-being in general? Yeah. Um, from, I guess an adult point of view, um, I think people get hung up a lot on making things too complicated uh, and, and trying to do things super fancy. Um, I think it's the same for any kind of, even like the technical coaches like you, for example, it, you, it's important you nail the fundamentals all the time. Mm. And, you, and we have this thing at school, which um, I'm working at at the moment, where we have a, like a shape of a tree and we have different, like the low hanging fruit of a tree, they've got to make sure they tick off themselves. Okay. So things like um, e eating more, eating, making better nutritional choices, uh, getting more sleep, things like that. Yeah, like sure. really simple and basic things like getting stronger, just really simple stuff. And people are, like don't people just kind of forget this kind of aspect of it and chase kind of like the top kind of fancy stuff which may maybe see over whatever sort of website or social mm. media site and um so i'll give you an example as one of uh what when i was at hampshire one of the athletes one of the um the academy boys they came in and filled in their like well-being chart in the morning and out of 10 how, how fresh are they feeling ready to train and everything like that and he, he was, I was super sore today. I had a big session yesterday, super sore today. And um, I was like, oh, okay, how, how much uh, sleep did you get? Oh, uh, five, six hours sleep? I was like, right, okay. Yeah. Uh, what did you have for dinner last night? Oh, I didn't, didn't have time for dinner. Um, and it's like, well, <laughs> so don't, and it, but he was like, oh, but I managed to do a little bit of rolling on my hockey ball and stuff like that on my foam roller. I was like, right, but you didn't have any dinner and you have five hours sleep. Yeah. So maybe why you're quite as sore today. So I think a lot of people get hung up as trying to make things too complicated when in reality, if you nail the fundamentals, so if you make better nutritional choices, like really simple, you try and get as strong as you can, that's going to be important. So your, your fundamental movement pattern, so like your squat, your hip hinge, RDL, uh, single leg sort of, knee dominant movements so like a split squat or a lunge your push and your pull and some kind of core bracing or trunk stability type work and i think if you've got all of those 
regressions are in place and fundamentals in place and you do the other basics well so you drink lots of water you sleep well you make good nutritional choices you recover well and i think you i don't think you can go too far wrong really yeah and i think some unbelievably valid points there i think the s and c world can be quite complex if you're new into it but for anyone listening how what are the most simplest things you can do you talk about sleep eating well and recovery there they're very easy to control aren't they and it's down to you as an individual to do that do you find with kind of the way the world is at the moment with social media and people on their phones and you know you talk about sleep and sleep hygiene and nutrition but how important are basic things like eating well and sleeping and hydrating because they're three things you can monitor and control and we don't even have to touch protein powders and creatine and all this other stuff yeah. just those three simple points how important are they to help performance and keep it you know you up to that optimum during training yeah absolutely um i mean one of uh, the key kind of points i like i want to come i want to sort of touch on is the best ability an athlete can have is availability sure. so if you're not available if you're not available to train and compete then that's you're not going to get you're not going to improve you're not going to get any better mm -hmm. um so i think from being available recovery is unbelievably important and making sure you have the right sleep um you may eat the right eat the right stuff at the right times um so for one it's going to put it's going to reduce your injury risk massively it's going to reduce your chances of burnout you'll feel fresher ready to train and perform with your skills coaches because that's how essentially you're going to improve as as a cricketer in this instance mm. like there's a lot of talk on strength and conditioning and being the best visit like physical shape you can for a sport but if you're if you're too sore and you're too uh like you haven't recovered properly from a day before to even go to your skill session or whatever then you're not going to improve so i think you, that for availability wise and the robustness wise and um injury prevention kind of aspect it's it's definitely one of the most important things and would you see yourself in your role as an s and c coach to enable the athlete to as, as almost like a clog in the wheel to help them perform because it's very easy. A lot of players get caught up on being an athlete and they worry more about their physical capabilities than what is their most important thing, which is their skill set on in cricket, yeah. scoring as many runs or wickets or catches. Would you see yourself as more as a component to help them get to that rather than you have you get caught up in the S&C? Well, because you see it everywhere. People get caught up in lifting numbers. What do they squat? What do they deadlift? But if they can't mm. catch a cricket ball, those numbers are irrelevant. Absolutely. I mean, first and foremost, my job is to make sure they're available and healthy and fit to be able to be on the field of play mm -hmm. and be able to train and, and compete in their sport um so that's got to be the number one goal as a strength and conditioning yeah, coach yeah. um obviously we also look at we've also got to try and like peak their performance at the right times and we do that in different ways in the gym and stuff like that but if they're not available to train and compete then you're not they're not going to get any better as yeah, as cricketers yeah. um, i mean they can get a lot stronger but if they can't go and bowl a set number of overs and work on their different skills bowling or batting or whatever then they're not going to get better at their sport okay. so that's got to be for me the first thought process as a strength and conditioning coach how can we keep them fit how can we keep them healthy and, and if you were then designing a program to be able to keep someone on the field and training at their optimum i guess 11 12 months of the year if we just yeah. run through a cricket cycle quickly and i perceive a cricket cycle from the first of october to the end of september how would you then split, I guess, that year's cycle up? So how would you then split sort of, let's talk winter training. How would you split 1st of October to the end of March? Because a lot of people, as I said previously, earlier on the podcast, people were saying, what fitness should I do? Well, for me as a player, I used to do different things at different stages of the year. But in the most simplest terms, what, what would that look like if you were, I guess, coaching someone and, and how would they be able to implement it? Yeah, um, so I guess cricket is quite lucky in the fact it has those clear sort of time periods which we can focus on kind of a different thing. So 
in kind of like what we call like the prep phase, so the, like the start, very start of pre-season, I think the main thing you've got to be looking at is to increase your, your work capacity and be able to maximise kind of the adaptations you want in, in like preparation for future sort of phases of, of the year and of the season. So I think things like muscular, this is where we've got to build like muscular endurance and trying to get as strong as we possibly can and increase these adaptations as much as we can in in this sort of time period. So we, we, we've also, we've probably got to look at things like the physiological profile of the sport. Uh, so in, like in cricket and try and make things as specific, specific as possible to to a physiological profile of cricket. Mm-hmm. But I think definitely in this time of year, we've got to get our base and we've got to be as, get as strong as we can, which is going to be your number one sort of adaptation and goal you've got to get to before you even so worry if, about anything else. So if you're a young cricketer uh, now, you'd sort of be concentrating more on the strength aspect of things. Is that what you're saying? Like... Yeah, uh, yeah, definitely. Kind of, For, kind of year? Yeah, it, dep- it depends a lot on their kind of well, what kind of age they are for one, okay. their training age, what kind of level they'll be playing at. But um, this time of year is all about maximizing the adaptations mm. and in preparation for the next kind of stage. So get as strong as we can, um, get your work capacity up. So do lots, um, which is probably the best the best kind of route to go down in this type of year. We don't have to worry about any sort of competition or even fatigue to some aspect. Okay. We can be a little bit sore going into the next day because there's no sort of competition coming up. Mm-hmm. Of course. And then and then after Christmas and then into the season, how, how would that look like? Especially if cricket is, you know, if you're playing club cricket, you're training once a week or on a Saturday. Mm-hmm. But if you're a young cricketer under 18, you're playing an enormous amount of cricket. And even like academy players pro players they're playing a lot so how, how would that how would that structure sort of the playing aspect of the snc world yeah um well in season it, it gets a little bit more complicated um we've probably got to look to draw back a little bit and look to probably maintain instead of increase okay would be the, probably the, the type of the, the phrase i'll go for um We've, we've, yeah. So I, I would, I would say maintain rather than increase. Um, so we've got to be wary that fatigue kind of masks your fitness level. So we've got to kind of do the the, the least amount we can have to the least the least amount we can do to maintain the adaptations we manage to sort of get pre season without kind of tipping ourselves over into a sore category for like the next kind oh. of day. But at the same time, we've got to make sure we try and maintain the intensity. So if you were squatting 100 kilos in pre-season, you've got to at least be trying to keep 100 kilos on the bar um, in season, but without. So we've kind of, kind of looked to maintain and instead of increase. Um, and we've also got to be very, very in mind of regarding like a novelty of new exercises so i think we've got to keep things very like reduce the kind of um like the variation in your training program Mm -hmm. so keep things very simple keep things what you're used to doing um because novelty is is like new exercises when we especially when we're likely to be more fatigued Mm -hmm. um so i think that's uh, that's a key point as well but i think as well we've got to look to be adaptable in in your kind of programming so look for opportunities to where we could push maybe so say you get like you're scheduled to play a three-day or four-day game and it gets washed out or something suddenly we haven't got a game for a week so it might be an opportunity that week to push and maybe try and increase some adaptations a little bit and push a little bit more but at the same time we might have a week where we've got three games so we might under so then we're going to have to understand where we've got to Bryce. Something like that. But we so we've got to look for opportunities to to push and maybe pull back a little bit as well, bearing in mind of the schedule. 
Sure, sure. And you touched on one point there, which I thought was quite interesting. It was the the fatigue in the season can mask, was it performance or how you're feeling? Yeah, absolutely. So, so that's quite yeah, interesting so I, point I, there. So I used to point fit, fatigue masks kind of your fitness level. So, oh, okay. it, I mean, if if, we, if we're fatigued, we're not going to be able to perform at, at the level which which we would normally expect ourselves to to be able to perform at. Sure. Um, so, for example, we may not be able to produce as much power in the bowling in the bowling action. We may not be able to sprint as fast as we can when running after the ball in the field, things like that. So, I think that the most important thing is you're going in fresh. So, the last thing we want to do is go is wake up on a, on a game day and feel a little bit sore. Sure. So that's a kind of so we've got to kind of do the the least amount we can to maintain the, the adaptations we built pre-season without kind of getting into the kind of sore category. No, and I, I think as well on that point, for bowling especially, fast bowling especially, where they go through an unbelievable amount of load in their bowling action, mm-hmm. um, the amount of load on their front foot, the amount of skipping, like the skipping off their back foot, the amount of load which goes through their spine and things like that. We've got to look at, in season especially, things which they're not getting and things which they are getting. So they're already getting a low, large amount of load through their, through their front foot and through their back. So, and they're also getting a lot of skipping off their back foot. So maybe we might load down a little bit of the load through their spine gotcha. and a little bit, like we might reduce a little bit of um, like their plyometrics kind of work they do because they're already getting lots of that because they're bowling a lot more. Yeah. So I think we've got to be a little bit uh, smart as to what kind of areas we push and what areas we pull back as well. And, and if you could now give a young player or anyone three top three of your top tips to help them improve or keep fit physically, what would they be? Uh, in their most simplest terms, three points would be, first point would be to play the sport mm-hmm. and play lots of different sport. Um, so don't just stick to cricket or whatever sport we are okay. playing. Go out and play a load of sport as much as you can. Mm-hmm. Um Get strong, get strong, and enjoy what you're doing, which it, it sounds very simple, but it's going to be so important. So, but even things like just all kinds of sports are going to introduce so many different movement patterns and movement skills, which maybe they don't get just from playing one type of sport. Yes. So if they can enhance their literacy by playing loads of different sports, and instead of specialising super early, that that would be the three things I would say. So play lots of sport, get strong, which is going to be the foundation for everything, mm-hmm. um, and and enjoy enjoy what you're doing. Perfect. Well, I'm going to put all your captions in in, in the description below where you um where your Instagram handle is and and everything else like that. But Bryce is obviously you you've not blown my mind, but your knowledge is obviously huge huge um i'm trying to get the right words out here your knowledge is is very very good um and i think the beauty about you having done some work with you is you've got all this knowledge that you could implement in the most simplest terms which players understand and i think that's why you've worked with such good organizations at such a young age um and, and and yeah your passion for the industry is is very easy to see so um if anyone does want anything, any S and Cs, any personal training sessions, anything like that, I don't. I know you don't like personal training sessions, but any S and C sessions, <laughs> then um, speak to Bryce. I know personally, you'd be more than happy to help everyone. Um, and yeah, Bryce, it's been an absolute pleasure to have you on this this podcast, and hopefully, we can get on again soon. Yeah, thanks. Thanks a lot for having me on. No it's been, worries. Uh, it's been good. Brilliant. Thank you. Thanks, mate.